All right. So let's start with uh, Amazon Q and uh, Q for business. Now, when I first uh, heard about Amazon Q, it was uh, Amazon Q was just introduced in November of 2023 at the reInvent conference at the end of November. And when I first heard about it, it was kind of pitched. Um, it was pitched as the Q, the Q service that you see in the management console. And I was instantly unimpressed because um, the the queue in the management console is basically just this little utility to help you get hints and tips about what what to do and how to do things in the uh, in the management console. And it reminded me of that. Um, do you remember that thing that Microsoft did in the '90s with that annoying little paper clip? I think his name was Clippy. And he would come up and he says, hey, I'm here to help you. And of course, the first thing that you need his help on is how do I make you go away? So that's kind of what uh, 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 that's kind of what Q reminded me of. But it turns out that that's just one manifestation of Amazon Q. There's also uh, a Q add-in uh, add for the uh, AWS toolkits in the various IDEs like Visual Studio Code. So this allows you to... Um, perhaps uh, highlight some code and say uh, to Amazon Q, please explain what this does, or please tell me if there's a security risk in the code that you see here. On the networking side, in the network reachability analyzer, there's also Q support in there. So if you have a little network puzzle, you can basically ask for some help. If you're using the Redshift query editor, there is a SQL generator now that is uh, built into that, which is nice because it knows about your tables and structures and things like that. Uh, Q and Connect. Uh, I don't know too much about Amazon Connect. Uh, I know that it's a service for uh, creating like call center applications and things like that. Uh, what's interesting thing about this is that you can imagine that if you are a customer support person and you're using um, Amazon Connect and it has the Q integration built in and you're listening to a customer talk about some problem or situation, um, Q is, is kind of listening in, and it can basically suggest what could be resolution. So you as a customer service agent, you might not be, you know, 100% aware of what is needed to, uh, to handle the, the problem at hand, but maybe uh, uh, Q, uh, Q and Connect uh, knows. There's also an EC2 instance type selector. Uh, this one is one that I need to research a little bit more, Q and Code Catalyst. So the idea here is that you go to Q and, and say, hey, I would like you to implement this uh, feature in my code base. And it goes off and it implements it. And then it uh, actually checks everything in and creates a pull request. So potentially, you know, this is very exciting to look at this. Of course, you know, I'll have to see what all of this means. Now, everything that I just rattled off falls under the general heading of Q for AWS Builder use. So all of these things are basically utilities built into AWS to help you and I use AWS better, okay? And if that's all Q was, that would be fine. But my presentation is going to be about this. This box over here is different. Q for AWS business use. This is going to allow us to create an application, our own application, embellish with whatever knowledge base we say, and create our own little uh, chat application. So it's not, it's not, this is not for getting to use AWS better. It's for working with our business domain better. Okay, so Q for business uh, fundamentally is going to let you create your own generative AI chat assistant. That's what it does. It's really good at creating a simple little website that's going to have a little chat assistant, uh, assistant in it. It's going to make a small little front uh, web front end, which you can plug in with whatever authentication mechanism that you choose. And in, in my demo, I'm going to use IAM Identity Center. It makes use of existing large language model and you can augment it with your own data, which is called a knowledge base. Now, this is the key bit right here. If we just wanted to create a generative AI assistant and use a large language model, well, we have ChatGPT and it's free, so why would we do anything else? But you see, ChatGPT doesn't know about our internal uh, information. 
We could have information on a SharePoint or in Salesforce or something like that. These large language models like ChatGPT, they don't know anything about that. But what if we were to create something that works like ChatGPT, but it had access to our internal information? Okay, that is what Q for Business allows us.